Praise the Lord. Let's turn today to Amos. Amos, chapter 9, verse 15. The last verse in Amos. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. I shall plant them in their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of the land which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. Many today think that this political state of Israel is what is prophesied here, but no. The political state of Israel which exists today is not what is prophesied here by Amos, no. For Israel, the seed of Israel, is who the land is promised to. The seed of Israel is who will not be uprooted out of the land. The seed of Israel is not those who are today current unbelieving Jews who occupy that land. Current Antichrist, where we know that who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, whosoever denieth the Father and the Son. We know that the Jews who occupy Israel today, the land, the political state, are not those who are the seed of Israel. No, we know that they are Antichrist. They do not believe in Jesus Christ. They are liars. For who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? If you go to the political state of Israel today, and you start preaching out of your Bible, and you start preaching Jesus Christ is the Messiah, they'll spit on you. They'll throw stones at you. They'll, they'll chase you out of the street. They deny that Jesus is the Christ. Therefore, they are anti-Christ. So no, this is not what Amos is prophesying about. Many today think that this is what they prophesy about, that the, these Jews who occupy the political state of Israel today is who the promise has been made to, but no, the promise was made to the seed of Israel, the seed of Abraham. And we know that there are Jews who are Jews outwardly, but not inwardly. And those Jews who are not Jews inwardly are those Jews who have not been circumcised in their hearts. The circumcision not being an outward circumcision of the flesh, but an inward circumcision of the heart. The heart that has gone from a stony heart to a fleshly heart. For I will give them a heart of flesh, saith the Lord. So we know that those who inherit the land, the land, are not those who are there today. No. These are antichrist. These are liars. These are killers. We know that they bomb and send soldiers to protect their borders. But we know that the kingdom of our Lord is not of this world, or else would his servants fight. The kingdom of our Lord is not of this world, Jesus says, or else would his servants fight. Are his servants fighting today in Israel to protect their borders? No, those are not the servants of God there. Those are not who the promise was made to, no. The promise was made to the remnant. The promise was made to the Gentiles who were grafted into the remnant. The remnant being 7,000 who have not bowed their knees to Baal, Paul writes in Romans chapter 11. Paul writes that we are wild olive branches and that some of the branches were broken off of the natural tree, Israel, so that we could be grafted in, Gentiles. But Paul was not a Gentile. Paul was a Jew. Paul was one of the remnant, one of those early Christian Jews who recognized their Messiah, Jesus Christ, their King. They were not cut off, broken off. They, the early Christian Jews in the early church, Paul, Peter, Mary, Tabitha, James, Cephas, John, those early Christian Jews did not bow their knee to Baal. 
No. They bowed their knee to Jesus Christ, their Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. And there the remnant Isaiah prophesied of. And they shall inherit the land. The remnant of Israel shall inherit the land. Those Jews that are there today in the political state of Israel are not the remnant. The remnant was the early Christian Jewish church. And all of those Gentiles who have been grafted in from that day onward. Let's turn. Let's turn. So we, we shall inherit the land and not be plucked up out of it. Let's turn. Let's turn. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 21. I am not preaching replacement theology. No, the church does not replace Israel. The Gentiles do not replace Israel. The Gentiles were grafted in to the remnant, the early Jewish Christian church. Paul, Peter, the disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's turn. Isaiah 60, verse 21. And this tree, this olive tree, shall inherit the land and shall not be plucked up out of it. Isaiah 60, let me find it here, Isaiah 60, verse 21. Isaiah 60, 21, we read, Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hand that I may be glorified. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The political state of Israel as it exists today is not all righteous. No, they are not who will inherit the land forever. No, the righteous shall inherit the land forever, a branch that God himself has planted, and it shall not be plucked up out of the land. Let's turn. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 15. This tree that shall inherit the land forever and shall not be plucked up is the righteous church of God, Jesus Christ, which did not replace Israel, but is grafted into Israel. As it is written in Romans chapter 11, let's turn the branch that shall not be plucked up. Matthew 15, Matthew 15, verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Did God plant the political state of Israel today that rejects His Son? No. So don't be surprised if that political state is plucked up, rooted up. Don't let it shake your faith if that happens. No. For they shall not inherit the land, those anti-Christian Jews who deny that Jesus is the Christ, who are living in the land today, who occupy Jerusalem today? No, they are anti-Christ. Christ rejecters, liars, for who is a liar? Save he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Who is a liar? Who is anti-Christ? But he that denieth Jesus is the Christ. He is a liar that denieth both Father and Son. All men should honor the Son. But do the Jews today who live in the political state of Israel honor Jesus Christ? No. They'll spit in your face if you tell them to their face that Jesus is Messiah. I was raised as a Jew. And let me tell you, the Jews do not honor Jesus Christ. The Jews do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Jews do not believe that Jesus Christ is their Messiah. In fact, what do the Jews believe, preacher? 
What do today's Jews believe? Today's Jews who occupy that land, the unrighteous Jews who occupy that political state of Israel today, believe that us, we Christians, that we are all idolaters, that we've made a man, Jesus of Nazareth, a rabbi, that we've made him an idol. And they think deep in their heart that we're all condemned because we've made a man an idol. But we know that an idol is another God. An idol is a God who is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. An idol would be Baal. An idol would be Asherah. An idol would be some sort of a Buddhist heathen idol, a golden idol, men's hands, the work of men's hands. An idol is something that you worship that is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Friends, Jesus Christ is not an idol. Jesus Christ is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob manifest in the flesh. Not another God. Not an idol. Not a Baal. Not a Diana. Not an Isis. No. Not a Shiva. Not a Krishna. Jesus Christ is the Holy One of Israel, the God of Jacob. Not an idol. But these Jews do not believe that Jesus is the Christ. These Jews, the political state of Israel today, has not been planted by God. The olive tree is the remnant. The believing Jews and the Gentiles that were grafted in to the olive tree. And we, the church, shall inherit the land, the righteous church. Let's turn. Let's turn to Matthew. For everything that has not been planted by God will be rooted up, Jesus said. Matthew 13, verse 40. Matthew chapter 13, verse 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, then shall the who, preacher? The righteous. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. That means who hath wisdom to understand this. Who hath wisdom today to know that the political state of Israel is not the olive tree is not God's kingdom. God's kingdom would never be ruled by antichrists, no. They are not planted of God, no. The righteous have yet to inherit the land. Let's turn. But many today believe that the political state of Israel is of God. Let's turn. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. For those which do iniquity shall be cast out of the kingdom. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Sin. Those which sin against God. Those who are wicked. Those who have a defiled heart. Those who cannot cease from sin will be gathered out of his kingdom and then because there are no more sinners in the land and the righteous shall shine forth not wheat and tares growing together hard to tell which one is of the kingdom and which one is of the kingdom of darkness no it won't be like that the righteous will shine forth when the sinners are removed from the land, and he shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, 
and them which do iniquity. Oh, whosoever honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father. If they don't honor Jesus Christ, then they offend the Father. Let's turn, and they'll be gathered out of his kingdom. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Daniel 12, Daniel 12, verse 2. Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise, who hath ears to hear, let him hear wisdom. And they that be wise, and they that be wise, it is foolish to think that the political state of Israel today is of God. Christ rejectors, Christ haters, killers, no. The kingdom of this world belongs to Jesus Christ, not Benjamin Netanyahu and the Knesset parliament, no. He's not the caretaker of the kingdom of God, no, until Christ returns, no. He occupies the land until Christ returns, or even before that, he may be rooted out. They may be rooted out of the land, for whatever has not been planted of God shall be rooted out. We know eventually that they will be rooted out when the King Jesus returns, that the sinners shall not inherit the kingdom of God but the righteous shall inherit the land. Daniel 12, 2, 12, 3, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Only the righteous will inherit the land forevermore. Let's turn, let's turn, Luke chapter 1, verse 16, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, speaking about John the Baptist, full of the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb, the Bible says. And many of the children of Israel, verse 16, Luke 1, 16, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people, Prepare for the Lord to rule and reign with him in the land. John did not turn all of the children of Israel. No, but many did John turn. Who were those many? Those who turned to Jesus, the King of Righteousness, the Jewish Messiah. Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down, for this day I must abide at your house. Zacchaeus was one of the many who turned to righteousness. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. The disciples turned to righteousness, one of the many children of Israel. He says to Paul, Paul, I have ordained you, paraphrasing, to suffer many things for my namesake. And Paul was one of the many, of the seed of Benjamin even, a Pharisee of the Pharisee, Paul said. Good Jewish stock. Paul, an Israelite indeed, turned to the righteous king of righteousness, as John Baptist turned many Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Many early Christian Jews 
are the seed of Israel. And that seed is who the Gentiles have been grafted into today, that branch. And that tree, that olive tree that Paul writes of in Romans 11, will be planted in the land forevermore. Righteousness. Worshiping and serving the King of Righteousness. Let's turn. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming when He comes to take back the land to take back the land from the killers and the thieves and the covetous, the fornicators, the antichrist, the liars, the adulterers. When Christ comes to take back the land, we, we abide in Him, little children, will not be ashamed before Him at His coming. If ye know that He is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Everyone that doeth righteousness is born of the King of righteousness, Jesus Christ, not having our own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of God through faith in Jesus Christ, and because we have faith in Jesus Christ, who he is, what he taught, what he's coming back to do, because we have faith in Jesus Christ, we now do righteousness. And we, if we continue in His goodness, shall inherit the land promised to us. Let's turn. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually, Jesus Christ of the order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christ the King of righteousness. Let's turn Hebrews chapter 7. And as king of righteousness, his kingdom shall be filled with those who are righteous, and we shall shine forth like their father, like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let's turn. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27. Let's go down to verse 27. Hebrews 7, 27. Hebrews 7, verse 27. I'm sorry, Hebrews 7.26. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Jesus Christ, a high priest, holy, undefiled, harmless, separate from sinners. Our King has no fellowship with sinners, those workers of inequity. Our King is separate from sinners. And the righteous, those who do righteousness, who are born of Him, for we know that everyone that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as He is righteous. We know that whosoever doeth righteousness is born of him, and we shall inherit the land spoken of in Amos. Let's turn. Let's turn. Psalm 68, 18. Psalm 68, verse 18. Psalm 68, 18. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gift for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. 
the Lord God is going to dwell among his people. The Lord God is going to dwell in the kingdom of God, in the land of God. Jerusalem, let's turn. Psalm 132. Psalm 132, verse 13. Psalm 132, 13. Psalm 132, 13. For the Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation. The Lord will dwell in Zion. He hath chosen it for his habitation. And he hath chosen the righteous to fellowship with rain and rule and be their God in that land. Let's turn. Hebrews 12, 22. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. Hebrews 12, 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, Paul writes, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. When the Lord returns, the elements will melt with a fervent heat. The earth and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. And then he declares in his word, there shall be a new heaven and what? A new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Let's turn. Let's turn. Psalm 104. Psalm 104. Psalm 104, verse 35. Psalm 104, 35. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. The sinners are going to be consumed from out of the earth. And the wicked will be no more. David said, Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. The tares shall be gathered and cast into the fire. But the righteous shall shine forth in the kingdom of their father, inheriting the land planted of God, not to be moved forevermore. Let's turn. Proverbs 2, 22. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 22. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. For God did not plant the transgressors. God roots them out. Everything not planted of God shall be rooted out, Jesus said. God planted the wheat, but an enemy came and planted tares amongst the wheat. An enemy hath done this. They, the wicked, the sinners, the transgressors, those who do iniquity, will be consumed from the earth, rooted up from the earth, and they shall be no more. Psalm 22, verse 27. Psalm 22, 27. Psalm 22, verse 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All the ends of the world shall turn to the Lord all kindreds 
all nations, as the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky, when Jesus comes back to take his land, we, as the olive tree planted in it, shall remain forevermore. And those, after the time of the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, all nations shall turn to Jesus. All kindreds, all peoples from the ends of the earth will worship Jesus Christ. But the sinners, the wicked, the transgressors, those who commit iniquity, shall be consumed from out of the earth. Liars, antichrists, those who hate their brother, fornicators, adulterers, backsliders, those who knew the way of righteousness but turned from it, as a dog returning back to his vomit, as a sow that was washed returned to wallowing in the mire, as a man with an unclean spirit who went out and that spirit came back and found the house swept and garnished and brought with him seven more spirits more wicked than the first and the last state of that man was worse than the first. Backsliders shall not inherit the land. Sinners. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And I will declare unto them, Depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. There's a doctrine today that says that we're all sinners, no one can ever cease from sin. 1 Peter 2.14 1 Peter 2.14 Excuse me, 2 Peter 2.14 Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children who cannot cease from sin will be consumed from out of the land. The wicked will be no more. If you cannot cease from sin by faith in Jesus Christ, you are not born of Jesus Christ. But we know that whosoever doeth righteousness is of God. He that doeth not righteousness is not of God, and will be plucked up, gathered as a tear, cast into the fire. The righteous shall shine forth in the kingdom of their Father when Jesus Christ comes to take back the land and reign from his throne. I pray that you'll cease from sin by faith in Jesus Christ, that you may inherit the land and not be plucked up out of it. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.